The topic that we want to introduce today is the design concept. So a structural designer should select appropriate materials, shapes, and load carrying system so that the design structure safely carries the applied load and remains stable and usable during its service life. So the goal of designing is to remain safe, remain stable, and make the structure usable for the application. In the mechanics of materials, we don't want to cover all design aspects, but we want to provide you with the required skill to be able to go for the design courses. One thing that we want to introduce in mechanics of materials is how to make sure that the stress, that the strength criteria is satisfied in our design. We want to focus on how we can make sure that the structure is, remains safe using the stress criteria. Consider that you want to design one elevator or something, and you want to design how much would be the appropriate diameter for that wire, for that rod. This is what we call it design. One important criteria that should be met is the strength requirement. It means that that wire should be strong enough to carry the load of you and that box and possibly other loads that that box may experience when it is subjected to move. We want to make it safe by making sure that the stress level is not reaching to the maximum yield strength or ultimate strength of the material used for making the wire. Okay, so what we need to design here is basically how much would be the diameter of that and what material we should use for making that cable. So here we are talking about the shape of that, the cross-section area and the material. Okay, this is what we call it as design. Um, design has several aspects, like the serviceability, how we can make it usable during the service life, or stability, and other things that you will learn about them in the design courses. Here I just want to focus on the strength criteria. For the strength criteria, we have one simple equation, and that's stress should be lower than, say, the maximum stress in the material. As simple as that. How we can determine stress? Stress is force over area. How we can determine sigma y? We can test the material. Okay? Let me give you an example. Can I have a volunteer? Okay. How much do you weigh? About 210 pounds. Okay, about 210 pounds. Okay. So this is you, and I assume that 200 pounds is the weight of that box. Okay? So how much would be the total load that this cable should carry? 410 pounds. Assume that you want to make that by steel, which has yield strength of 36,000 PSI. How much would be the required area for making that table? We say stress is force over area. The force is 410 pound. An area is pi r squared. Okay. And that should be smaller than the yield strength still, which is 36,000 PSI. So how much would be the required radius of the wire? So R squared should be larger than 0 0.0036. Okay, so the diameter should be about, say, 0.1. Do you take the risk to go in that box with a wire with that diameter? What? if he had more breakfast that day and instead of 210 he weighs 2 and 11 pounds you said that you approximately weigh 210 will he be safe in that box so there are uncertainties in the loading like how much is the weight that 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 cable should carry do we know exactly how much of the, is the weight of that uh, elevator when we are designing this building, do we know how much is the exact weight of the persons who are studying in this classroom? Do we know what is their mood? Are they going to jump? Or they are just sitting there and sleeping in the class? 
Do we know how much is the weight of individual person who are sitting in the class? So there are some uncertainties in the loading. Similar to that, there are some uncertainties in the material that we are working with. Do you remember the, the tension test that I talked about that on the previous lecture? If you repeat testing on the same batch of materials, you will see different results. For instance, one rod may yield at 36 KSI, another one may yield at 35.8, another one may yield at 37.2, or different values. So we don't know how much is exact value of yielding point for a certain material. And we don't know how much is the load that one structure can carry. Consider the tornado, consider the earthquake. So to be safe, it is not a good idea to use that equation because of the uncertainties that we have in design. Let me talk about that in this figure. For this equation, consider the stress-strain curve. What we say is that the stress should be lower than the yield point. Assume that the red point is the yield point. So every stress level below that line is acceptable for us. But what happens if the load passes through that line? We are not safe anymore. The structure fails. So we need to have safety margin. To introduce a safety margin, we will introduce one parameter which we call that allowable stress. Allowable stress is lower than the yield stress. So instead of satisfying the stress level below the yield stress, we make sure that the stress is below the allowable one. So in that case, what happens if the stress gets a bit higher than that point? Do we see failure in the structure? No, we are still in the safe zone. So this is the safety margin that we need to design in our structure. The safety margin, as I said, are introduced by using the allowable stress and factor of safety. So allowable stress is simply yield stress divided by the factor of safety. The higher the factor of safety means the higher safety margin that we have in our structure. Can we consider the factor of safety of 1,000? What happens if we do so? It would be a lot more expensive. So it increases cost and that would be less economic. Designing means that we need to adjust the safety and economy together to come up with a suitable design. We need to make an appropriate selection for the factor of safety. So there, we don't use the left equation, but we do use the right equation for our design. And that's what we call it design equation. All right? The typical value for factor of safety is about 2 to 3. It has to be over than 1. For steel design structures, it's about 1.67. It depend on, depends on the importance of the structure. It depends on what kind of loading that structure will experience during its service life and many other factors. And these factors of safety are usually given to us by building codes or design codes. So we do not select them. Okay, These are given to us. But sometimes we need to determine the factor of safety in the currently built building. In that case, we can use this equation. Factor of safety in the currently built structure is sigma failure divided by sigma actual, or tau failure divided by tau actual. The actual stress, the sigma actual, is the actual stress in the current structure, which is under loading. And the sigma failure is the maximum stress that the material fails at that point, which is typically sigma y or sigma u. All right.